Hello and welcome to day 16 of the Cricket World Cup where as for the previous 15 days we've had a really close nail biter of a game. No, no that's 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 actually not true. It's been very one-sided again and I don't know about you Jono. I'm John, it's me Robbo with uh, Jono Gordon tonight by the way. If you could refer to me as the king that'd be. I will absolutely never be doing it. that in my <laughs> life. I'm getting a little peeved with these games because we're, what, 16 games in, 17 games in, whatever mm. it's been, and they're just not a lot of fun. And I don't know. No. Oh. I think early in the tournament we saw that to, you were wanting to win the toss and bowl, mm. and now it would seem to have flipped. So you now really want to win the toss and bat. But the wickets, regardless of whichever way, have been so flat that you either needed to the 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 team batting on the wrong half of the toss has never really been in it. Now, what we have learned today is that catches win matches. You cannot drop David Warner on ten with a reasonably easy chance and allow him to go and score 163 off 124. A strike rate of 131.45. True. When Australia lose their first wicket at 259, you're probably going to have a tough day. Wait, you, yeah. I mean, we've seen, we've, it's been a thing of the tournament, hasn't it? Non close games and bang average fielding, if I'm honest. Now, mm. I don't mind people talking about the ground. And people are going to sit and go, oh, yeah, but the outfields aren't very good. That doesn't mean you can't catch it when it's hit to your head height and you ain't going to move. Like, you, you could probably catch that in a swimming pool. Like, it, it doesn't matter what you're on. If you've not yeah. got to move, it's pretty irrelevant. But, yeah, it's just, I mean, David Warner, I did call it out as the earlier in the tournament. I think he will be one of the leading run scorers, especially if he gets on a roll. And I think today might be the start of his roll. I think I'm actually doing pretty well on the old uh, calls because I think I had Quinton de Kock. Rizwan, Bairstow was my only one, I think. And mm. then I had Rohit Sharma and David Warner. And I think I'm going okay. Yeah. Yeah, Pakistan just didn't really then, they got off to a reasonable start. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if we go through the, I, I obviously text you boys earlier, didn't I? When I was like, oh my God, Harris Rouse first over has gone for 24. He then in total bowled three for 83 from eight. Uh, and actually brought it back considerably because there were times when the Pakistan attack were going you know, flogged to all parts. three of us at 47, but, didn't they, at one stage? Yeah. I mean, you look, but you look at the Australian card, right? Let's say they take, they get Warner out for 10. Now, I'm not saying for a second that the rest of the card is going to look exactly the same. But one of the things on commentary, they were saying that there was, there's been a bit of panic in the Australian middle order and then the Australian team, because they've not been getting off to decent starts. Take that catch when David Wall is out for 10, that then starts to manifest itself again, doesn't it? Whereas all of a sudden you've got, you're losing your first wicket at 259. Maxwell comes out, backs away first ball, tries to whop it out of the ground and gets caught up mid-arm. But then Smith, seven, Stoinis, 21, English, 13, Labashane, Bader, what, seven, got eight, come in six and out, start two, Hazelwood none, and Zampa one. Like, if you take, you take that opening partnership away from them, the, the, that Australian side is not full of runs at the minute. And I think Pakistan are going to be kicking themselves because they could have quite easily been chasing 280. Well, less than that, if you, you, know, know. If you look at it. But yeah, I, I mean, it's, well, I think what we're seeing from this tournament is I don't, like you, you look at when teams have got big scores, and it's it's when openers have gone big. I don't yeah. think it's the easiest. Everyone says all oh, the wickets are flat. It's not Trent Bridge five six years ago, where the ball is absolutely beating onto the bat. You can stand there from ball one and blade it, because otherwise, if that was the case today, Australia would have got four hundred and fifty. Mm. It's yes, when you're in, you can score very quickly. That's primarily due to the size of the grounds and the fast, the, how fast the outfields are. But I, I think sides are missing a trick a little bit. But yes, Australia got off to a pretty quick start. I don't think, I still mm. don't think enough bowlers are bowling just decent with a new ball. Just run in and bowl top of off stump. Just, just bowl there. 
there's enough in the yeah. pitches at the minute. If you do what the Dutch did, for example, the Dutch did really well, ball it cross the scene, hit back of a lane, and go, right, you've got to hit us off it. Right? Yeah. And yeah. there is enough in these pitches to do that. But then when you get in, yeah, runs galore. Absolutely runs galore. But you haven't really seen anybody, other than maybe that the first game New Zealand kind of did it to England where some of the guys came in down the bottom and gunned it. But no right. one's really, you, you'd have said it looking at some of the stars, certainly throughout this tournament, 400, 420 was on the cards. But mm. no one's kind of got there because we've seen it's not easy to come in with an older white ball. I know none of the balls are actually old anymore. They don't really get old because of the two new balls. But I, I, I know it's easy to say the wickets are flat because people are getting 330, 340, 370 and stuff like that. But I, I think that this modern area of modern area, that's like a modern era, um, but mm. I've had a long day. I'm trying to. I don't think 340 is that big a score. You saw Pakistan the other day knock it off. Piece of waz. Yeah. If they're given themselves a chance. A piece of, piece of, piece yeah, of waz. That was me trying not to swear. No, uh, piece of waz. Yeah. That me yeah I'm sorry. Swear. Sorry. But yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Like, yeah, that's, that's just me looking at it I mean, from. Yeah, I didn't say it. I mean, we were saying last night, a couple of things I want to ask you about uh, what we did last night, but yeah, it's it's just a bit, it's either not, I just don't think the conditions so far have been conducive or, you know, one side has scored so few that it's been easy for the side chasing or one side has scored so many that it's been so difficult for the side chasing. Like, you know, Pakistan, you know, got to go at, what, seven and a half to get anywhere close to it today. Seven and a half just under to win it, to win the game. We got to do that. Every over 50 overs, you know, you lose a couple of wickets. Yes, they had a reasonable start. Imam Al Haq looked decent. His opening partner, whose name escapes me, batted well. Baba's got to be a bit of a concern. He's not really had a great start to the tournament. Obviously, Rizwan's done well. If the car went in and, and didn't get any today. So, yeah, it's there are, it's like there's one or two guys in each side kind of doing what's needed with the bat, but then there's not enough people in in good enough form really to to chase big scores down. And as you say, even when sides are setting big scores, it generally tends to be that someone's getting a hundred or a big hundred um to to help lead them to that. So I think if you look at that Pakistan uh, today, you got the opener's got sixty four of sixty one, Abdullah Shafiq, and he got sixty four of sixty one and then Imam Oha got seventy off seventy one. And they were actually going quicker than that, but then when the spinners came on and yeah, Zampa Bob Z- really, Zampa Bob well, really well from the, the analysis we kind of heard on the thing. Four for 53. But they were going, like Carlos Brathwaite was talking about it on the on the radio, and he was doing really, it was a really good piece of analysis where he stood there going, one boundary, three ones and over, and they are well in this. Yeah. but And then all of a sudden they had one over where Maxwell came on, and they just went one up, one up, one up, 17 off the over, and you think, you know, they're, they're, they should be cruising. It's like, it's not, it, nowadays, like that kind of target, everyone sits and goes, oh yeah, you've got to go at eight and over. You haven't, you, you, you haven't got to do that because you look at their side today, the Australia side, yeah, they've got four, they've got the four front line bowlers in Stark, Hazel, Cummins and Zampa. Zampa's bowled well, but you've got, Stark's gone at eight and a half. Cummins has gone at eight and a bit. Yeah. And then you've taken Maxwell and Stoinis off their 10 for 80. So it's... But, St- but Stoinis actually was the one that changed the game, wasn't he? He got, he got the, the, the he big got, wickets. He got, he got yeah. the big wickets. But that, that'll be them going. I know, for ex- I know what they've done there. They've gone, right, we've got to go after this bloke. But you... Yeah. I don't think you do. I think it's a little bit... Cricket has developed that much. What they can now do is change the mentality slightly. And because they know they can score that quickly when they choose to go... At the end of an innings, mm. that I mean, yeah. you look at Australia got three hundred and sixty-seven, and only got seventy in the last ten. So this was going to be my next point to you, actually. Um, Australia, I think, off their first ten were about going at about elevens, and that then meant that they they could slow down. Whereas there was this amazing stat from Ramiz Raja, who was saying that Pakistan have not hit a six in the first power play of a one-day international for over 18 months. And so they like to hit, yes, they'll try and hit boundaries, but they won't take, they won't try and clear the ropes. So I think they only, they didn't, they were maybe 60, I think, 
maybe not even that, maybe 50, maybe they were going at fives in the first 10. So you, you're only halfway towards the score, comparative score that Australia had within their first 10 overs. Now, obviously, Marsh and Warner went off like an absolute steam train. But that then, I know what you mean about being able to catch up and you are going to, you know, that a Maxwell over going for 17 or whatever. I just feel like, you know, you and I have done it as well. I've done it as an opening batter. Like, you do go out chasing these big scores and it's very difficult to bat with any kind of freedom without having that feeling in the back of your mind that, Jesus, we've got to keep up this, we've got to keep up this rate here. A couple of quiet overs and then we're right, we're right behind it. So... You do feel like you yeah, want to get yeah. on the front I, foot. I think that's a bit of score war pressure, and I think that's, that's a, a massive difference in the minute between, and you'll still see that in amateur cricket. I'm not saying you won't. But you look at the mm. run rate charts today. So after 10 overs, Australia were going to eight. So 80 off 10, you're guessing. I'm, I'm, just, I'm was eight looking at... I'm, at no stage did they get above or above nine and over. So right. you're thinking they've got, they've got to 360-odd, and yeah... I mean, in the last 10, their run rate actually went down considerably. They were they were in line for 400 plus. Well, if they got the run rate with 10 overs left, they'd have got 395. But then you look at off five overs, back your center going at eights. And, and you're standing going, like, you, you look at that scorecard from it, and that just stinks of people getting in and getting out because they think mm. they're not thinking through what they've got to do. Yeah, they could think, if they just you've seen with David Malone, 140 off 110, off 110 balls or whatever it was. David Warner, yes, they've gone off at eights for the first ten, and he's ended up 160 off 130. The, you're seeing these guys who are opening the batting, who are scoring quick, scoring big runs, and at the end it's quick. But you've got Quinton mm. de Kock, for example. He's he scored two hundreds, mm. and has not been that much above a runner ball for his first 45 foot. Yeah, I think we've discussed yeah. some with that. I think that South Africa have probably looked to approach this in a slightly different way to most of the teams. And it's like, let's get to 20 overs, trying to get to 100, 110, mm-hmm. maybe 120, but for the loss of no wickets. Because I think they know that they've got top six and then they're very fallible after that. So I think that's probably quite a concerted effort from the South Africans. Let's get to 20 overs, having lost as few wickets as possible for around 100, 120 going at sixes and then explode. But I think it's been quite easy to see that that's their plan and that's their mentality. I've not seen another side in the tournament yet really strike me as having a plan such as that and actually really wanting to stick to it. For me, so you look at the batting styles that teams are opening the batting with in this tournament, is no one's got two belters. No one's got two guys at the top of the order who go out and smoke. Other possibly Australia might kind of fall into that in in that. But you look at the others, they haven't. England haven't. India haven't. New Zealand haven't. Mm. Any of the other teams go down the bottom end of it and it don't really matter. But the main sides haven't really got two two dashes. But teams are still getting mm. 350, 360, 370. So I don't know. I, I I think there needs to be a bit of a... I think as well, the thing is the difference in... And I can't remember if this was the case at the last World Cup, but the fact there is now effectively three power plays or three stages of the inning, because it used to just be... Well, it was 10 overs. It was 15 overs for a bit, wasn't it? And then it was 10 and a five. Mm. But now, because in those middle overs, you're only allowed four people out, Do you, you don't need to be belting it over the ropes to still score quickly. You you can beat infielders, yeah. and because there's less boundary riders, you, you should still be able to score quickly. Mm. And so I think there's that little bit of change in... You, you think in terms of dashes, how, how many are there in the World Cup? Abs- like out and out. People who just go and bang it. England yeah. have got, got yeah. a few. But then you yeah. look through the other sides, you'd say Maxwell Stoinis, possibly. Livingston from England. India haven't really got it. They've got people that can clear the ropes, but they haven't really. Mm. And, and, and yeah, yeah, but you'd say. Yeah, but he was probably. the one guy that Carlos Brathwaite brought today, who's, as he's got older, mm. his role's changed in his club team. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but other than that, but even New Zealand aren't picking a niche. No, Glenn Phillips, you'd say, is probably the closest that yeah. they've got. Although Mark Chapman came in and, and hammered it. Yeah. Other night. They're, they're, um, they're, they're, one of the guys that opens the batting, well, they've had the picked few, haven't they, that, that kind of... Yeah. Oh, Finn Allen, he's the one that, that came over here and yeah. didn't really... Well, did okay yeah. when he in the C20. So it'd be interesting to see how it, it changed throughout the tournament. We're not, I mean, we're not even halfway through yet, so... No, 
No, we've still got about 47 games before we're yeah. halfway through. And before we finish, you're not around tomorrow. You're going out for a yeah, dinner. No. So it's either going to be me and Huge or just me doing a 15-minute monologue if uh, we beat South Africa in the rugby, um, which none of us can see happening. But what, what, yeah, what, what do we think about the cricket? Netherlands v Sri Lanka. Could be a close game. I, I genuinely think that nice. could be a close game. Yeah. What was it that was in today? The closest game they've had so far is 38 runs and something like 42 balls or something like that. That's been the, the yeah. closest yeah. finishes. So I think Netherlands, Sri Lanka could be a close game. Not necessarily for the right reasons, but who's going to win it? Despite my thoughts at the start of the tournament about Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, I think Sri Lanka may well just have too much in terms of spinners against Netherlands. Yeah. How about you? What do you think? Sri Lanka. I think Kusar Mendes is in too good yeah. a form. And yeah, they've got decent spin options. And then England, South Africa, who wins? I think it's going to be one-sided and I don't know which way. I think a team's yeah. going to win by 85 minimum um, yeah. or seven wickets. If I think I think right. a team or one of the teams, whichever point, will get blown away um, because I, I yeah. just think that's the nature of this tournament so far. And It's whether, it, it, if the cock gets runs, South Africa will win. If one of the England's top three get runs, They'll win. If both get runs, we might actually get a close game. Yeah. Well, we will see and we will report back on that tomorrow. Simon, thank you for your time no as always. It's wonderful to see your massive, pretty head. And uh, yeah, see you again tomorrow. Maybe. Cheers, guys.